Greetings, Jonathan Camarda, CIO. Have, hopefully everyone's doing okay out there. As we roll into May and the summer hits, we've had a little heat come down in the market. Uh, first down month in the last six for April uh, for equities, S&P, Dow down 5-6% uh, from where they were at the highs, NASDAQ down a little closer to 8 Most of them are retraced, still about 3% off those tops. So what's going on, what's causing this, and what does it mean for you? So let's just start with Jerry and the Feds. They've been holding back on cuts. We had 8, 9, 10. <laughs> Who knows how many cuts they were calling for at the end of the year, down to maybe zero. Uh, now we're still looking maybe on the back half of the year, even though we're in a political season at a couple. Now, here's the deal. We've been having sticky numbers. Employment's been stubborn. Rates have been high. Dollar's been strong. But we just saw a little crack in that, like we talked about, with the employment numbers. In fact, just today, fresh, we had 175,000, way off what they were looking for. So, and Jerry, early this week, for anyone that was a masochist like I was, they watched exactly what he said, uh, that if there was some weakness in employment numbers, that would be the catalyst for a cut. And so maybe July, still less than 50-50. September, 70%, if you can believe it, in a political year before November. But we shall see. So what does this all mean? Well, equities are rejoicing, and they have bounced here uh, early in May. Uh, so it'll be very interesting with rates coming off, right? We talked about the two and the 10-year. We got all wonky with the yield curve. But the two-year is now coming down from the fever at 5%, and the 10-year off uh, in, into the mid-fours. Pretty attractive with the dollar coming down as well, which means, again, equities risk on. We're seeing that at least in the short term. However, before you get out your pom-poms, this is a seasonally weak time of year, most years, but election years, these months of the summer, these dog days of the summer, can still have an uprising. So that's why we are watching that. Now, if you look at the, what well, we look at, the National uh, Association of Active Managers, uh, they came down, they ran away uh, during the month of April, got down to about 60, 61% in exposure to equities. We took a little off, but we, again, looking at the longer term picture and some of the geo, uh, you know, the global macro, uh, backdrop, we stayed still, even our aggressive strategies in the 80s, we want to see how this party plays out. Now, uh, what does that mean for you, uh, you know, as far as the clients? Well, the consumer in general, uh, beyond the specificity uh, of you, the client, is definitely showing some weakness. What we've seen is that spending's up, income's up slightly, but savings is down, credit card usage up. So it is pretty rough for the lower income folks out there. Probably doesn't apply to many of you. Uh, but again, there is some suffering on that lower end where we've seen in some chain store, we won't name the names, restaurants showing receipts and CEOs concern of consumers not even being able to afford their food. That might be a little hint there. So those are things to watch out for. Those are, again, recessions could come on quick. There's also talks like we talked about a stagflation, right? Inflation stubbornly high, but growth low. We have a bunch of different, uh, you know, little uh, slippers that could fit. Uh, could fit Cinderella in this case, but we shall see as we try not to project the future, just react very quickly to what we're seeing in the present. Once again, if your strategies uh, based upon what's going on with markets uh, delineate from your individual situation as your personal wealth advisors, and my love clients, we talk about the specificity of your situation, let us know. Other than that, uh, as always, enjoy uh, the kids getting off from school, vacations. Don't worry, be happy. Uh, we'll stay eternally vigilant, and we just want you to uh, stay frosty. Till next time, Jonathan Camarda. Hey, everybody. Blake Bunch here, and today I wanted to talk to you about asset protection and a few ways that you can protect your hard-earned assets. One, asset protection is shielding your family's assets from losses to things like lawsuits, financial predators, kids' divorces, or other risks that may arise. Unprotected assets are very exposed to judgments and charging orders from the court that may meet other demand. Some assets have protection due to their nature, depending on the state law, of course, like homesteads, retirement accounts, and life insurance products. Many other valuable assets are fully exposed, like taxable investment accounts or bank accounts in your name or a joint name, real estate, and other businesses. Corporation owners frequently have false senses of security. The corporate veil protects owners and their assets from liabilities of the corporation, but the corporation can be lost if the owner is sued personally, like from a car wreck or a real estate liability. One of the best first lines of defenses that we use is insurance. 
uh, including big liability umbrellas. Other ways that we protect your assets are using strong structures like properly constructed LLCs and in rare states with strong LLC charging order protection laws. This is a very important second line of defense that you can utilize. Siloing assets is important as well. If you put real estate and stock account in the same LLC, if the real estate were to burn, the stocks are on the table to satisfy those claims. Domestic asset protection trusts, and in Wyoming, recently buzzing, are frequently overkill and can be more restrictive, complicated, and expensive, and less protective than many promoters let on. In my view, the right LLCs are simple and cheap and enormously effective. And that's all I had for today, folks. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a comment, like, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you and see you next time.